Life Audio. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations. We want families to come here and gain insightful strategies that empower them to successfully teach diverse learners at home. Hosted by founder and CEO of Sped Homeschool, Peggy Ployer. Our goal is that these powerful weekly conversations will boost your confidence to cultivate the best at-home learning environment for your student. For more homeschool resources, go to spedhomeschool.com. You're listening to Empowering Homeschool Conversations with Peggy Ployer. We'll start the conversation with Peggy and her guests next. The best-selling illustrative Bible for kids and teens, the Action Bible, is now better than ever. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is an interactive Bible specifically created for kids and teens ages 7 to 15. The Faith in Action Edition is designed to engage young readers in God's Word through hundreds of vividly illustrated Bible stories in chronological order with activities and games. Readers will grow in God's Word by using QR codes, providing free access to over 2,000 devotionals, hundreds of prayers, character stories, teaching videos, maps, timelines, and much more. Additionally, the Action Bible Faith in Action Edition allows readers to explore the major themes of the Bible like courage, faith, hope, love, service, trust, and wisdom. Each theme provides practical advice on how to live out God's Word. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is the best interactive Bible you can purchase for your child or teen. Purchase your copy today at Sam's Club, Barnes & Noble, or Amazon. Hello, this is Dr. Doug Grotheis, host of Truth Tribe, where we seek the truth through reason and evidence about what matters most. And we are not tribal since truth is for everyone. Please join me at the Truth Tribe as I discuss the reasons for Christian faith, the Christian worldview, and moral issues such as abortion and gender ideology. To listen now, go to lifeaudio.com or search Truth Tribe on your favorite podcast app. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool, a nonprofit that empowers families to home educate diverse learners. To learn more, visit spedhomeschool.com. Here's Peggy Ployer. Today, we are going to talk about the secret to finding calm in homeschool chaos. Wow, isn't that a great topic? <laughs> so us today is um, Kristen LaValle, who is a seasoned homeschool mother of three, registered nurse and health coach whose passion is educating moms about nutrition and wellness. Welcome, Kristen. I'm so happy to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me, Peggy. I appreciate it. Absolutely. This is such a good topic to address. Just as the homeschool year is getting started, a lot of times we're all of our focus is on our kids and we forget about mom <laughs> and um, some things that we need to do for ourselves and set it up properly so we don't burn up mid-year or um, just as the year's going on. And I know we had some people already who have submitted questions ahead of time. If you are joining us live, just know that you can submit questions, comments. We'll be able to see those in um, the feed, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. And um, we hope, well, well, we're also on Twitter too. Um, So just be able to to interact um, with us um, on this topic. I know a lot of people are like, well, I seem like I have to sacrifice one for the other. And um, I I, I think Kristen's going to encourage you that you don't have to. <laughs> She's been there, done that. Um, and so we're here this hour to, um, to just help you to figure out how to, to balance that, um, that, that homeschool angst sometimes that, that comes about. It seems to rule your life um, and maybe how to kind of take that over. So, um, so Kristen, I'm super excited to be addressing this topic today with you. I would love for our audience just to get to know you a little bit better and your background. So if you could just share um, with us um, some things about your, your homeschooling background and also your health background and maybe what led you into what you do right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are going into year 16 of homeschooling. Um, <laughs> one of those, I don't know if any of you watching were like this, but we were just one of those just, you know, regular old families when we had little tiny people, we never intended to homeschool. Um, right. Was what I say was probably the most audible voice I've ever come close to getting from God. Um, our oldest son at the time was in um, second grade and our younger son was in kindergarten. We, both of them did kindergarten um, at our church. 
And it wasn't an issue with the public school system with where we were. It was nothing like that. And we were one of those that were like, we are never going to homeschool because yeah. <laughs> weird. So we were one of those families, but boy, can the Lord really change the heart. So yeah. um, the Lord started speaking to me about that. And I was just like, okay, fi I finally just said, okay, if that's what you want, you're going to have to deal with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> It was like, uh-uh, we are never going to be one of those crazy people. Um, and, you know, I had one conversation with him, and I prayed about it and just left it up to the Lord. And he was like, we'll try it out for one year. We're just going to yeah. try. For it was one of those things. And um, that year went great. And toward the end of the year, I was like, okay, well, how did you think it, it went? And he was like, it was good. Let's try it out for one more year. And at the end of that next year, I just didn't even ask him anymore. I just kept going. <laughs> so, now, um, I have a 13 year old and I have graduated my boys. So I'm here to encourage anyone, you know, if you are going, oh, I can do it, but I can't do high school because like suddenly it just changes, you know, <laughs> it doesn't. I am one of those that um, like give me a challenge. Right. And I'm one of those that kind of views that as like you're running a marathon. Yeah. And you just stop short and say, okay, I'm done running the marathon. I put way too much heart and soul and work into it to want to send my kids to high school. So we just went on through and we will do that with our last one here. Yeah. You're the second guest to, that I've had in the last month to say that exact same thing. So somebody listening to this podcast really needs to hear that multiple times, I think. <laughs> yeah. So, apparently so. But you asked about um, my other background. So yeah. I've in for um, 27 years. And I have been super, super blessed to find different nursing positions that only required me to work like one day a week. Because uh -huh. when you're a homeschool mom, I was like, okay, how's this right. going to work? Um, and I also, when we lived in Virginia, I founded a, ho a big homeschool co-op there that ended up just, it was fabulous. It was such a blessing just to so many families. And um, that took a lot of my time. And of course, that took a day out and it was like, okay, how am I going to do this? So I've worked fairly minimally um, since I started homeschooling and really since I had kids because I never wanted to be, you know, gone all the time. So <laughs> I've done different things to work a minimal amount. But um, four years ago, um, you know, I was, I have been very passionate about nutrition and as the years progressed into total health, because we are not right. just, right. We are, mm -hmm. Mind, we're a spirit. God has made us multifaceted. And so you cannot just address the body. And so as time yeah. went on, I started becoming more passionate about taking care of all of me, you know, all yes. of who. So um, four years ago, I became um, a certified health coach. And then I had been teaching nutrition classes and I taught a mom's nutrition class at our co-op. And, you know, I was always encouraging moms, whether it was in homeschooling or parenting or just natural living or any of these things. And I finally went, why don't I just kind of narrow it down and work with moms? This is who I've been talking to for so long anyway. And right. it's my passion, Peggy, because when you can influence how the mom views food, if we're just talking about nutrition, right? but she's the one that's doing most of the grocery shopping and most of the cooking. So yes, get a mom on board, I just think, man, it can just change the generations after because we are living in a very, very unhealthy society. And every generation has a lowered life expectancy. How awful is yes. that? I know. Yeah, it dropped three years recently. Yeah. Um, and it's always gone up and now it's going down. And there are some things that, yes, we, we need to change. I was just um, taking part in a, um, a webinar kind of online conference this last week. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the book Fast Like a Girl, but it's one I recommend tremendously to a lot of friends um, because a lot of the fasting data out there is met, was made on men and women don't realize how their cycle is influences fasting and weight loss and hormones and um, there's there's just so many things and we get all these this data and we don't quite know what to do with it so we try our best and we say I'm living healthy and then things happen 
like for me, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2020 and I thought I was doing everything right, you know? And so, so having somebody come alongside you who has, you know, gone through a lot of that research and, and knows from like a medical point of view, but you know, a realistic point of view, this is the life you live as a homeschool mom. (laughs) That's, that's a great benefit. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, I'm, I'm passionate about just helping, helping moms. And again, Mm -hmm. who they are, as a whole person, because what's the topic of our conversation? You know, I would say the majority of moms that end up just giving up homeschooling, a lot of it is just the stress, you it know, is, yes, how to manage their day well. And that's the important thing to learn and what I can bring to the table and help moms to understand for sure. Absolutely. So when you first started homeschooling, because it was so much not on your radar, did you struggle with finding calm in your homeschool? And what maybe were some of the biggest things that you struggled with personally? You know, I'm going to be honest, Peggy, what I have found and what I would tell any mom. So like, I don't just work with homeschool moms. What I would tell any mom is, you know, the number one thing that you can do with bringing order to your home so that you don't have chaos is really starting kind of at that very young age, just with disciplining and making sure. Cause the one thing that I see homes in chaos over is the kids are running the show and not the mom. You are not going to be a successful homeschool mom. If your kids are running the show, because you're going to struggle, you're going to throw your hands up and why won't they ever listen to me? But if they don't listen to you, when you weren't homeschooling or outside of homeschooling, they're not going to listen to you as the teacher either. So for me, I just from a very young age, just was very um, passionate about biblical discipline, not, you know, like some harsh, awful, you know, anything like that, but just biblical discipline, making sure that my children knew that when I said something, I actually meant for them to do it the first time, Mm -hmm. not three and give you three chances, but I trained them from that young age. So by the time they were, you know, so we started in first and third grade, that was already established. And when mom said something that just meant that I do it, hopefully with a happy heart, we always have to work on that a little bit because sometimes we eye roll or the, you know, muttering under the breath or whatever. But honestly, that's probably the biggest thing that I would say to anyone is, you know, if you're experiencing that chaos because you feel like your kids don't listen to you or, um, you know, things are just going crazy because there's no structure. There's ways, there are definitely ways to fix all of those things, but it is getting just to that surface level of, okay, what can I do to benefit this parent child relationship and make sure that they understand that I'm mom, I'm teacher, but that God put me in authority with that and that they right. need to understand how they fit into that. This probably takes the chaos a little out of the picture. Right. So I'm going to throw in a wrench in this because this is a question I've heard a lot um, is, well, what about all those academics I need to focus on? How do I fit that child training now in there? Um, because a lot of parents, they focus so much, and especially in our community, these kids are struggling learners. And so they're, you know, just reading takes longer, math takes longer. And now you're telling me I have to train my kids too. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to let you answer that question because I'm sure you've got a great answer for it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had a pastor that said, you know, you can't unscramble eggs. Just talking about how we can't go to the past and live in the past. You can't change anything in the past. So right. Hopefully you start when your child is a toddler, a very small toddler with helping them to understand that you're the parent, they're the child. And when you started at that young age, you don't have the struggle. Like they've totally got it figured out by the time. But there's a lot of families that that don't, they don't start there or they maybe they were brand new Christians when they started homeschooling and, and now they're like going, now I got this whole boatload of things I got to work on. (laughs) the beauty of homeschooling is that you're living life together. Now, sometimes that's a beauty. Sometimes. (laughs) After a word from our sponsor, we'll dive back into this conversation. 
The best-selling illustrative Bible for kids and teens, the Action Bible, is now better than ever. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is an interactive Bible specifically created for kids and teens ages 7 to 15. The Faith in Action Edition is designed to engage young readers in God's Word through hundreds of vividly illustrated Bible stories in chronological order with activities and games. Readers will grow in God's Word by using QR codes, providing free access to over 2,000 devotionals, hundreds of prayers, character stories, teaching videos, maps, timelines, and much more. Additionally, the Action Bible Faith in Action Edition allows readers to explore the major themes of the Bible like courage, faith, hope, love, service, trust, and wisdom. Each theme provides practical advice on how to live out God's Word. The Action Bible Faith in Action Edition is the best interactive Bible you can purchase for your child or teen. Purchase your copy today at Sam's Club, Barnes & Noble, or Amazon. There's no better way to start your day than spending time in God's Word and in prayer. Don't know where to start? We have a free daily prayer podcast created to help you do just that. The Your Daily Prayer podcast delivers a thoughtful devotional and timely prayer to you seven days a week. Gain inspiration, faith, and encouragement with daily messages in 10 minutes or less. To start listening now, search Your Daily Prayer on your favorite podcast app or visit lifeaudio.com. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool. Go to spedhomeschool.com to get resources and support for teaching your unique learner at home. Your kids, you, I mean, I think of all the different things. You know, we have an adopted daughter working through that whole adoption process. Um, I lost my mom a few years ago. Um, you know, we've mm. moved a couple of times. These, these are all life events that cause so much stress. And quite honestly, when we're under stress, what do we do? Like, we're not these beautiful, perfect little moms that comes out, you know, when we're stressed. So homeschooling is a a beautiful opportunity to live life together, whether it is the good, the bad, and the ugly. But, you know, that's how our kids can see how we handle stress and how we handle conflict. And hopefully we're going to say, you know what, let's just pray about this. So the whole thing with living life together is yes. Like if, if they're a new Christian or if they just kind of so many parents are like, but they're so tiny, they can't understand yet. You know that I mean, no or whatever. So if you were one of those and you're homeschooling as well, my biggest thing that I would say is just to go to God's word because guess what? You need that desperately mom. And that is something that I will teach and preach like crazy. That is so, so important that right. you absolutely start off your day with that. And we'll, I'm sure, get to that. I can mm-hmm. dive later. Yes, but- yes. We're going to talk about peace soon. And I'm, I'm sure that'll tie in a lot. <laughs> so, you know, otherwise, it's important, you know, to teach our kids out of God's word. Okay. What does God's word say about your attitude, about obedience? Because when we can teach our children that authority figure and obeying us, that's really just pointing them to Christ. Because if we can learn, if our kids can learn when they're tiny, right? To say, yes, ma'am, and to do it and whatever, you know, that's ultimately just teaching them that submissiveness that we want to have toward the Lord. So I right. would just, the biggest thing there is probably just digging into God's word together. You need it on your own, mama. But taking your kids there and opening scripture, memorizing scripture together, praying together, you know, if they're Mm -hmm. having um, a discipline issue and just praying about it because there's so many times, Oh, how much do we have to beg for wisdom? (laughs) Exactly. I don't know what I'm doing here. I just, I wave my white flag of surrender. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Well, and I, I think too, and I really want to reassure parents with this, you're not going to lose out on any academics if you spend time, if you take time to not do academics, but work on character training, because in the end, the academics, your kids will catch on to things quick when they're mentally ready. But if you are not an authority within your household, like Kristen was talking about, you can just throw all that teaching that you just did out the window because 
you are not someone that they're respecting to listen to. And, and so there, it's kind of a catch 22 because you, you just feel like you have this anxiety in you to push, push, push academics. But the problem is, is if you don't have the discipline first, then the academics are not going to, they're not going to stay. And um, it's not worth your time and your effort that you're putting into it. Well, and I just think, you know, as you were talking, it made me think of the verse when Jesus said, you know, what good does it do or what does a man profit if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? Ultimately, the most important thing um, as a Christian homeschooler, now I know there's a lot of secular homeschoolers out there and that's not their primary reason. But for me, it was truly a call from God and it was truly like I wanted to pour the Lord into them and biblical truths into them every day. Um, and, you know, yes, it's important that our child, you know, succeed academically. Yes, if they are planning on going to college. But as a little rabbit trail here, you know, I pushed a little bit with the academics and my older son, who was not my struggling learner, we'll talk mm -hmm. about this later, but um, my older son was very capable. He was smart too smart for his own good in some ways, um, <laughs> perfectly capable. But, you know, he started telling me in ninth or 10th grade, he's like, mom, I'm not going to college. I don't want to go to college. And it rocked our world because, you know, we were of that generation, me and my husband of, you know, what do you do? You go through school and then you go to college and then it's the American way. Right. Mm -hmm. but you know what? Guess what? He is making more money than we do. Um, as a blue collar worker, he started his own landscaping company and he is very successful at that. And it mm -hmm. would kill him he had to fit into that paradigm of number one college that would have just sucked the life out of him. But, or if we were, if he was forced to be like inside or in a cubicle or forced right. in, our kids are all different. And I just encourage you, academics truly is not the heart of homeschooling. We really, really want yes. kids to learn their God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, to love others, to serve, to develop that character. And then they're going to decide as they get older, what they're going to do with that. Um, but also what they're going to do career wise. Mm -hmm. so. so it's the bigger picture, you know, really is you're focusing on the bigger picture versus just, you know, we got to get caught up. Um, we had a question from one of our viewers that came in on the topic we were just discussing. Danielle asked, what happens when your child gets frustrated when you take them to the word, to show them what they're doing wrong? Mm, I would love to know how, old that child is because that sounds like a teenage kind of thing to me but it could be a younger child I don't know Danielle if you can throw that in but you know if if you do especially have an older child that is pushing back on that I'll be honest because again I have adult children as well and I can just say that the only thing that you can do is pray for them it she said eight eight yeah. oh wow yeah. So I I had the same thing with my oldest. Um and and very very early on, very strong-headed. I, I just want to encourage you when they get to be adults, nobody will influence them. <laughs> but you as a parent may rack your brain a lot and try to bait it against the wall. Um because they are so strong-willed. But what I had to do with my son was just model that, you know what? God says it. He doesn't say that if you have a disability, that there's any clauses against you following this. So it may be that this thing that God says is going to be a lot of work for you. But look at this scripture here that you do all the time and get it right all the time. But your brother might struggle in this area, you know, just to show that there are some areas we even as adults, struggle with constantly. We have these sin patterns in our lives, and some of them are just more deeply embedded, and it's going to be something that God is going to work on us for a long period of time over. Other ones, oh yeah, got that. Um, and, and just to be able to show them, you know, God's not against you. He's for you. But these things are meant to keep you within the walls of safety. And you know what? And you just say it with love. Um, and, and yes, it is sin, but it's sin is covered by grace as well. I don't know. You have, what would you like to add, um, into that answer, Kristen? You know, that was a fabulous, a fabulous answer. And the only thing that I would add is Danielle, you know, 
one thing that I really had to come to the realization, and it was just a heart issue and it was a major pride issue for me, <clears throat> is we all are very good at, you know, seeing the flaws and the faults in others. But so I was super good at like wanting to just dole these things out and all of that. But you know, ultimately we are the example, right? Yes. Work on our heart before we can try to mold our kids into these things. And I wanted that. Like I just, I wanted my kids so much to love the Lord that, you know, it was all of these little rules. It was all of these things. But, you know, ultimately I had to be the example and I had to model whatever character traits it was because we are all sinners and it is really easy to um, fall into whatever it is we struggle because we all struggle in many ways. And right. Like, it's going to struggle in a different area than another. But um, that's just a thing that can encourage or discourage you that, that you're the example. And just to, to work on your heart, work on being the example and otherwise just give it to the Lord because those kids are not ours. We can do all the right things. We can do everything that we think is the right way. And like being the perfect parent and doing all the things. And right. I can tell you from experience because my older son had about three, three solid years of major rebellion when he was like between 17 and 20 and um, praise the Lord. I mean, I just prayed, 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 prayed because at that point, right. There, yeah. There's not a whole lot that you can do or say. And then sometimes when you do say something like I learned because yeah. Sometimes me thinking I was just speaking wisdom into something, you know, being so wise. Um, <laughs> see it as that. They do not see it as that. Um, no. So some, sometimes we have to know when to when to keep quiet. Well. Yeah, it, it all comes down to discernment and, and really it all comes down to love. Um, you know, if we don't, if we aren't loving and expressing God's love, you know, as scripture says, you know, if if you do all these other things and yet you lack love, you do nothing. And, and so to just realize that, and I, I mean, I, I'm, I've been there, done that, you know, God has just really softened my heart a lot through my homeschooling years. Um, and, and it just, it takes time, but, but just keep asking God to give you that, that to see your kids as he sees them, to love them as he loves them and um, to have patience with them. You know, I'm, I'm always thankful that God doesn't show me all my flaws at the same time <laughs> because, you know, I, I, as I was telling some ladies from church, I just crumble in a ball and say, I'm done. <laughs> and I think we sometimes do that with our kids because we see so many flaws and we're like, Oh, but I wanted to be better. And so we just, you know, like hammer all these things into um, and that's really not the loving way that God deals with us. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So as far, you know, as other types of roadblocks, what, you know, as you've been coaching moms and in the homeschooling world, running a co-op, um, what are some other big chaos, um, like things that come up into to homeschool lives that just kind of tend to upset our apple carts <laughs> per oh. se? couple of things, but the big ones that stand out, number one is having that perfectionist mindset. Um, yes. It was me big time. Like I'm very type A, I'm very structured. And listen, some of my traits, some of it is a good thing because I'm able to guide moms and help moms who are on the opposite end of the spectrum and don't have any order to their day. Like we have <laughs> order. Um, but you know, wanting to be that perfect mom, that is an immense amount of stress that you're never going to attain and yes. cause so much anxiety and worry. And that can lead to depression and guilt. It's just not worth it. So I would say no. just realizing there is no such thing as a perfect mom. There's no yes. such thing as a home and there's no such thing as a perfect homeschool. Um, with running the co-op, the nice thing is that I've known so many moms over the years and everyone really does it a little bit differently. And that's okay. That's yeah. why I hear about so many of the different learning styles and so many of the different teaching styles. And, you know, everybody, that's the beauty of it. God has entrusted those children to you, period. Yeah. You're going to know for your home what is going to look right. Like if you would have come to my home, you might have been like, ah, she's <laughs> 
hardcore, you know? Um, whereas I might go to yours and be like, what are, what are they, what is this unschooling thing? I don't know. <laughs> That's not something that I ever did or really understood, but you know what? That's okay because God has given each of us a, a different personality. He's given us each different gifts. Um, so that's the number one thing is, is that perfectionist, like I have to have it all perfect. And I see that greatly. Yeah. And- well, you've, you've just given us permission. I, I think, you know, that, that is truly, I remember when I first started homeschooling, I watched a video that somebody did that and I, that affected my homeschool career through its 19 years. Um, but I would come back to that. So if you're listening right now, you're new to homeschool, I want you to stick what Kristen just said in your mind and remember that you have permission to homeschool the way God made you. Um, and that that is freeing in itself. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the second thing that I see is something else I struggled with. So see, I'm just being very transparent here. <laughs> and it goes along with that type A personality. And that is being so rigid in the structure that you can't bend. You right. know, I've had times where I'm so rigid that if you were going to try to bend me, I'm just going to snap in half. Mm. And we do not want to be like that moms, because again, that's putting so much pressure on us and it's putting so much pressure right. on. And the reason I'll be honest, it's just sin because mm. when I am super rigid, it's because I'm trying to create again, perfection. I'm trying to have these perfect little children that are perfectly behaved and that never do wrong. And that's just pride because that is what it I'm is. the whole world to look at and say, she has such wonderful children. Oh, aren't they just so lovely and so well behaved? And I did hear that a lot, but you know what? We don't want to hear that from other people. We want the Lord to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You Absolutely. have taught them my statutes. You've taught them my ways and they know how to love people and they know how to love me. They know how to serve, you know, right. That rigidity. Um, so what that would look like in the homeschool in the homeschool world. I'll give you an example. Yes. It, we were always finished by school with school. And I'm sure most of you can say that we were always finished by lunch. If we were not finished by lunch, nobody was happy. Mama was happy. You know, the kids were happy because that was like their time to go play and hang out and do what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I was finally like, Oh my goodness. Okay, guys, <laughs> there's going to be times that like, a science experiment experiment might take a little bit longer. Right. I mean, we have something something that comes up, and you know we always need to be open to um, something that the Lord needs to deal with because there may yes. be a very problem, like we were just talking about that. Right. Something that we need to just stop and say, okay, let's deal with this. But if you're super rigid, it's yeah. not then you're piling that stress onto your kids. You've got to have this subject done by this time because we've got to move on to this next thing and we've got to be. Uh, 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 uh. Right. Um, and yeah. all of that back to putting that anxiety and overwhelm into your house, which is just not worth it. It's not worth it for you as the mom or for your kids. Yeah, that, that is so true. It's yeah. When we, Again, it it does. It relates to pride and what it can look like. It can look like, you know, just what um, what we tell our kids that that we have, you know, we've put this wonderful schedule together and, you know, we all need to follow that. And, you know, and I'm sure I'm I'm touching a a tough spot for some parents who probably spent their entire summer (laughs) planning out their school schedule. And yes, yeah, but it's, there are going to be interruptions and you're going to have to be able to let go of some of that stuff or say, "Mm, it's going to happen tomorrow and the schedule is going to get shifted a day or a week or, um, yeah, because that it, it adds chaos where chaos doesn't have to be if we look at it from the right perspective. So, because part of the beauty of homeschooling and part of the reason some people love it is the flexibility. And I just encourage you, like the year that we um, adopted our daughter, we did not start school that year until the second week of October. Yeah. Yeah. If you, a birth, you know, if you have a new baby, if you have an adoption, if you have a death in the family, if you have a sickness, you know, you're going to have things that pop up. And the beauty of homeschooling is that you do not have to follow this got to start by Labor Day 
got to be finished in June. You can just get done with it in August if you're still working at it. So mm-hmm. that's the beauty of it. Don't put so much stress on yourself that it has to look this very specific way. Um, because you do, you just, you put yourself into that mold and you make yourself very unflexible. And with that ability not to be flexible, um, it really does. I know from personal experience, again, I'm totally speaking to myself from experience is just that it can cause so much stress. That's just not worth it. Because one of the reasons that you're homeschooling is just to get to enjoy life together. Right. Yep. So I'm going to ask a a question that maybe some parents are, are thinking about when you say you have a lot of flexibility, but then they're saying, but my stay requires you know, whether it's attendance or certain subjects, how do you balance that flexibility with the requirements? And I can now understand that because we have lived in, this is our fourth state homeschooling. Um, <laughs> so you've had some experience with this. <laughs> one of the states that we lived in was so laid back when we first started homeschooling. Literally, I just had to go down to the courthouse and go, here's my notice of intent. Right. That was it. Okay. Well, then we moved to a state that allowed religious exemption and we actually became religiously exempt. So that's not the same as being religiously exempt, like from a vaccine It's being religiously exempt to where I had to do a very well thought out with scripture to support saying I am biblically opposed to the public school system. Here's why. Hmm. And so for 10 years of our homeschooling, I didn't have to report squat to anybody because it is no government involved. (laughs) Ever. Um, Then we moved to a state only for one year that um, it was a little bit different. They had different requirements. Now we're in a state that requires an umbrella. And I'm like, what's an umbrella? I have no idea. I learned that. I had to learn that system as well. Well, I'm going here, so I haven't actually totally got it down to a science, obviously. But you know, most of these. Most of these states, I will say with this one that I am in, so they do require that to the umbrella school, you put in attendance and Mm -hmm. they do like I had to give the different, you know, courses and, you know, the all that good stuff. That was all major new to me because I'm like, to Mm -hmm. me, this is a little too much oversight because I'm used to having none, you know, but exactly. mm -hmm. Most of you have to answer to somebody. Right. But, you know, I will tell you what this lady at the umbrella school said. And I'm quoting her, not quoting myself. Um, She said, you know what? It's really to make sure you're getting it done. She said, we don't require that you do, you know, like so many hours for the fall semester and so many for the spring, because technically, guess what? They're not the same. Right. No, they're, yeah. (laughs) Spring semester is way more. But she said, you know, so many people just go in and they put in their 90 days. And they put in their 90 days. Now, I am not telling anyone to be dishonest, but I am saying you've got the flexibility to where, guess what? Your school year is not going to look like the public school system, nor right. is it. So, that's not what home, home homeschooling is not just doing school at home. Right. We don't want mm-hmm. it to be modeled after just, like we're just doing public school, but we're doing it at home. So I'm not saying to be dishonest, but you can absolutely have those parameters if you have to report that to somebody. And you can give it wiggle room because you know you're going to be completing that. It may not be in their timetable, but you know you're going to be doing it. So, yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. and 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 really, a lot of those requirements have a broad range of, of flexibility within them. I, it's just talking to somebody like Kristen was talking with with their umbrella school that can give you that reassurance that yes, you can be flexible within this. Because I think when we see all of those requirements, it that's where the anxiety comes in. And then mentally we're, you know, not thinking straight because all of a sudden I've got to live up to all of this and, and how can I manage it with what, everything else I have going on? And we kind of blow it out of proportion because we're so anxious <laughs> about what we think we have to do versus what's really required. Absolutely. And that's what I was learning about the umbrella school is, you know, most states have that in place, not to make it to where this is the law, you know, right. And I'm just going to give a plug here, I guess. Um, you know, I have been a member since day one of HSLDA. Yes. I would just encourage you to join, to join HSLDA because they've got your back. If, if, Mm -hmm. Crazy, and even in these very red free states, like 
ones that have basically no oversight, they'll show you in their magazine, somebody, somebody had a question, somebody had an issue, somebody had a problem. So it, it doesn't have to just be the very restrictive states. You can, you can get on questioning what you're doing, you know, even if, you know, you live in one of those free states. So they've got your back. That's all I'm saying with that. And I am going to also say, if you know you're going to homeschool for a long time, don't do like me. And um, like, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to pay year to year. Five years ago, if I would have done the lifetime membership, I would have been done. And now I'm still paying year by year. So they, they offer a lifetime membership that's basically the same cost, um, I believe, as about nine or ten years of right. paying mm -hmm. year to year. So if you know you're a long-term homeschooler, just go ahead and do the whole lifetime membership. I'm like, right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and for those that have struggling learners, um, in the past when I've, I've talked with HSLDA and, um, Faith Barons, who's on the HSLDA staff is on the board of directors for our organization. Um, um, we find, they found that about half of their cases have to do with kids with special needs, just because you deal with so many other people outside your homeschool that don't understand homeschooling itself. And so there's a lot more inquiries on the basis of what, if what you're doing is acceptable. Now, this was before COVID. I got that statistic. So a lot of people since COVID have become much more accepting of homeschoolers, but still don't understand the homeschool law. Um, and, and also that it varies from state to state. So um, yes, I will plug a membership also for HSLDA um, and also with your state homeschool organization, because they're very closely tied to one another. And um, so figure out what those are and um, and get plugged into those because your state homeschool organizations are the ones who fight on the ground for your state laws. And so you can stay informed as well with that. Um, and, and it's just nice to know that there's somebody out there again, you know, that that calm. It, we don't realize how much a lot of these people fought for the laws that you are benefiting from now. Um, and I've had the pleasure over my 20s, plus years now being involved in the different state organizations. I actually worked for two before founding SPED Homeschool and meeting these people that fought against these laws that basically turned homeschooling legal from illegal. Um, and they, they're amazing people who, um, who have poured their lives into creating um, laws that you enjoy the freedom of today. So, so yeah, definitely want to give that plug out there too. And so so let's let's dive into and talk about the difference between calming strategies and a peace centered mindset. Um, what's the difference and how do we switch our thinking from one to the other? You know, so calming strategies are wonderful. I teach moms calming strategies. <laughs> we we need so that's more of an in the moment is more what. OK, I yeah. Um, and again, and it doesn't even mean calming strategies. because When we think of that, what's the opposite of calm. We think like there's a tantrum or there's something crazy going on. But sometimes one thing that I really talk with moms about and as homeschoolers, like I can, I can even say, I call myself an old mom now. So since I'm an old mom, like I can say, you know, literally you're going to blink your eyes and your kids are going to be gone. Yeah. So the most important thing that you can do. So I'm going to give you something that this is a, a calming strategy, but it's also creates peace overall is just to be mindful with what you're doing. And yeah. Yeah. The, wor the world has hijacked a lot of, um, a lot of term our terminology, like whether it's meditation or even when I hear it, when you hear mindfulness, you think of like yoga and, mm, and all that stuff. <laughs> right. All mindfulness is, is just being present with what you're doing. So exactly. for goodness sake, when you're spending time with your kids, whether it's school or whether you're just literally spending that one-on-one -on -one time that our kids need, like they need, they don't need a ton of time, but they do need our one-on-one -on -one time um, outside yeah. of school. Uh, mm -hmm. just, um, you know, do that with all your heart, whatever you're doing at the moment force yourself to focus in. We don't realize how distracted we've gotten as a society. We have no clue. And most of it, I blame on technology and the smartphone. It's like, cause we're always on, you know, like we're always, always able to be on. And, um, the phone is just such a distraction in the home. I'll be honest. Like, I just think when I have done school over the years with my kids, my phone is not anywhere near me, to be honest. Right. Much 
dismay of people who are trying to call me or reach me, but um, <laughs> all the time on, you know, you know, I'll say that, but um, you know, that's, that's one of my things that I will say that I teach moms that was just the simple fact of um, mindfulness. So when you're being mindful, it just means your mind is hundred percent there. That is a calm yeah. strategy and it creates peace overall, just because if it's something that you can consistently do, if you're in the moment, it's very, very difficult to put a lot of your thought into what's going to be happening tomorrow or what you did wrong in the past. Right. Right. You're just, you're living in that moment. You're enjoying whatever it is with your doing, whether it's your Bible study, whether it's if you're in church, whether it's spending time with your kids, whether it's spending time with your husband, whatever that is, is to be all the way present. That's yeah. what so that's one that's kind of a dual purpose, but other calming strategies, I mean, it, it is important. Okay. So another thing that I really teach moms is that self care and you kind of touched on it at the beginning. Now I want to be very careful here because so many Christian moms hear self care and they're like, but that selfish Jesus said that I should serve. I need to serve, serve everyone. Well, it's easy to fall into that, but here's the problem is we are absolutely to serve, but that's just in the sense that we are to consider others as more important than ourselves. We're to humble ourselves and be able to, you know, wash someone's feet. Like it's about that general attitude. But if as moms, we never ever are refilling our own tank, you're going to be empty and dry and cranky and stressed out. And it's just not worth it. Like, I promise you everyone in your home is going to be like, can you go take a few minutes, please? Yes, we want you to go take. So <laughs> what does self-care look like? That's another thing that I always say, because so many people think of self-care and they think of going to have a spa day. Right. Not what I'm talking about with self-care. Now, listen, if you can arrange that every once in a while with your husband or with a grandparent or with a babysitter, listen, do that. If you can arrange that every once in a while, by all means, that's a, a wonderful thing. We incorporated like way back, just at the very beginning when I first started homeschooling, my husband is a pastor. So he's a worship pastor. And so he goes late on Wednesday nights. And so he always takes Thursdays off. Mm -hmm. And we did it to where once a month on a Thursday, I would be like, I would get them started with school. I would do most of the school. And then like for the whole afternoon, I would just disappear and go away. Um, but we were, that's, that's something that not all of you can do. You know, some of you have husbands that maybe they're gone for a couple weeks at a time or, you know, everyone has a different situation. So what does that look like for you? Because it, it has to look like something or you're mm -hmm. going to be burned out frazzled mess. So it can literally mean five minutes of, I'm just going to sit here in the corner in some quiet. Okay. Right. I don't want to, so Bible study, I'm separating this because that's not really self-care. That's just spiritual. That's just being a disciple, right? That is, that's your sanctification, like digging into God's word, praising him, having your prayer time. That's outside of this. Like, I'm not talking about that. I hope you're doing that otherwise, because that's also going to make you a better mama and make you not so frazzled. Right. <laughs> um, so that's hopefully like first thing in the morning. Um, so but otherwise, one thing, and this just goes back to that um, self-discipline that we can teach our kids, that self-control that we can teach our kids. Um, I was always really, really big on teaching room time. Uh, so in the morning, number one, because I hear a lot of you right now, I can just see like the keyboards going, well, how do you, my kid's up at six o'clock. How am I going to get for them? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, this is how, okay. It's just teaching again that self-discipline because it's not selfish and you're not punishing your children or being mean or ugly. If you say, if you teach them, wait for mama, right? Wait for mama because they might get up at six. That doesn't mean that you have to get up at five. Okay. If they want to get up at five, they can learn to lay in bed and lay there very quietly. Cause guess what? They're going to usually go back to sleep. If you require them to do that, um, <laughs> then they're going to get their rest. But number two, it's teaching again, going all the way back. Like I started that when my kids were toddlers and they went to their toddler bed, wait for mama. And that simply just meant, you know what? You can get up and, and play, you know, in your room or whatever, but mm -hmm. I don't want to hear you running. Like, I don't want to hear your little, little feet stomping around, disturbing, you know, in other words, it had to be 
something that was very quiet. They could just sit and read a book. They could do whatever. But it was wait for mama. And so therefore, guess what? I didn't have to get up at the crack of dawn just to get up before everybody else because they knew like wake up time for my kids, wake up time being not necessarily the time they were going to wake up, but the time they had to wait for mama till was seven o'clock. Hmm. And that way I would typically get up between six and six 30 and I would have my quiet time and my time with the Lord. And I was ready to face my children and be ready to face my day, you know? Um, right. But going back to the self care thing is just, is taking time to do something that fills you. So like, I love to garden, love to, it's my therapy. It makes me super happy. So some people would be like, that's work. Why would you do that? But <laughs> it's, and so I'm like, okay, 30 minutes or so I'm going to be out here and Hey, get your kids working in the garden or doing whatever, but it's whatever, it's whatever fills you. And only, you know, what fills you. It may be that you need a nap. It may be, mm -hmm. Hey, some people enjoy cleaning. I do know women like that. Uh, that is not me. <laughs> no, that's the norm. But listen, if you just love cleaning, you know, just send. But going back to with room time, that was so important in our homeschool day. So important. Because like I said, we were generally done with school, you know, like lunchtime. We might do one little thing after that. But then I had a two-hour block. I hear gasps right now. Two hours my kids, I would send them to their room and let them play. It wasn't a torture chamber. I didn't have them, you know, in chains. It wasn't off. They were just in there playing quietly, you know, and it teaches them self-control and it teaches mm -hmm. them to entertain themselves right. because so much now is about stick them in front of a screen, stick them in front of a gadget, stick them. They can, I promise you, learn to entertain themselves and it's going to help their brain development and not hurt it. Oh, absolutely. But the screens, yeah. all the, that's not going to help their brain development. They're not designed for that. Um, but that was the most precious time ever in, in my homeschool. And we even did it in the summer because everyone needs that time away from each other. Right. You know, you're, you're going to come back refreshed, happy to see them, hugs, hugs. You've had your time as a mom that you need to do whatever you need to do, or even if it's doing reading with one of your younger ones, you know, like you have to work it around nap time or around different times. But I just really encourage you mama to, to make some time. You're not being selfish when you take a few minutes or an hour or whatever, just to say, I need to decompress and daily is preferable, you know, mm. if you can. and that's going to just prevent you from that burnout. And it does prevent anxiety too. Like so much of it is just about that calming calming strategies, but yet that's what's going to create that overall peace. Right. Yeah. So I can hear some moms saying, you know, I'm going to get some resistance over that. And we had a question come in from a viewer about resistance. She said, how can I help kids with resistance over difficult things? So what would you say to that mom who said, you know, her Dana, who just said, you know, her child's resistant over a lot of things maybe, or my child's just going to resist this because it hasn't, it's not something we've established yet in our house. So how do you work towards that? And how do you work against a child who just shuts you down like right away? Yeah. And so here's, here's the big announcement is that again, all of our little wonderful children are sinners. Um, they were born that way. And so all of them have that in them to some degree. Right over something. So I would say, number one, pick your battles. I was really good at making everything a hill I wanted to die on. It was, <laughs> they needed to be perfect, right? And if you're going to create perfect children, you have to die on every hill. It's all important. But, you know, I would say to, if you have a super resistant child, I would say pick your battles because you don't want it to be a constant strain and constant headbutting. It is just not worth it. And that's the kind of thing that makes you want to stick your kid in school. Like right. I would say to save the relationship, I put my kid in school. You don't want that to be said of you, mama, because right. you absolutely, God has gifted you with everything that you need for godliness. He just has. So we have to, uh, that's the first thing is to make sure that you're seeking the Lord in that and make sure that you're, you know, asking him for wisdom. Not every kid is going to respond the same and you have to just kind of know, you know, what your kid needs with that. The other thing is to kind of ease into things. So like, if yes. I'm like, let's just say a couple of moms are going, Oh, that's the most brilliant idea. I've got to do that. Well, 
guess what? I started that when my kids gave up naps because nap time was two hours. Okay. But they right. were like four and five. They weren't ready for two hours, but you can totally work up to that. And you can also, if you know, like if you can get a, like a beautiful, historic, clean, like audio book, you can say, you know what, after you've played quietly for 30 minutes, I'm going to have you listen to this audio book in your room and you can just do kids love doing stuff with their hands while they're listening. Exactly. Yeah. Every kids has sat there and built Legos. They got little fidgets. They got all the, every one of my kids has, has done that. So, um, you know, you, you work up to that. It's not something that one day you just go announcement start <laughs> day for two hours every day. You're going right. to, you know, it's definitely something that you, um, that you have to work up to and make absolutely yeah yeah so one other question we had from a viewer was i have a difficult time including fun time you know and we had talked a little bit about that you know schedule 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 um so this mom sherry says i have a difficult time including that fun time between lessons especially for my severely dyslexic daughter suggestions i love this question sherry because um my younger son who by the way is the one that went to college is he was my struggling learner he was a horribly struggling learner. He had dyslexia. Two plus two came hard for him in math. Like it was a constant like, oh my goodness. So we just implemented, we called them brain breaks. And now I don't know your family situation as far as how many other kids are in the home, um, but brain breaks are the fun, get out the wiggles time. Okay. Yes learners, they may have just that little hint of ADHD, or they may have a lot of ADHD. I talk a lot with moms about nutrition with that too, by the way, but yes. that's a whole different topic. <laughs> Take another hour. Uh -huh. But whatever it is that your kid struggles with, um, make you can make the brain break look however you want. Because most of the time, kids just need a few minutes just to get out the wiggles, get a drink, make a bathroom trip. Um, so ours in our home looked like... Um, we would generally do about an hour and then take a brain break. That may not work for your kid. You may Maybe get 15, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on their age, they have the different attention span, right? Mm -hmm. But um, whatever that needs to look like for you, and you know what your struggling learner likes to do. Um, you can literally, if they love Legos, even like whatever it is, you know what? It's Lego break. Like, if, you, if they can commit, but now the, the catch to this is to make sure that they have done their work, that they've given it their best, and that they've done their best. Yes. Because if a kid just knows, oh, I just have to hurry and get through this, and then I can have a brain break, you know, um, that's not the idea. The idea is to teach them to be diligent, to teach them perseverance, right? right. So as you're teaching those things and homeschooling is a beautiful time to be teaching perseverance, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> for mamas. So, but I would just say, break it down how you need to Sherry. And that way, you know, you're going to know what's going to work best for your kid. And if, you know, like if you have a younger one, guess what? They're going to need the brain breaks more. So maybe you pair them up with that kid and they go and they jump on a trampoline or they, it was always jumping on the trampoline in my house. Um, but you know, <laughs> encourage you to with my struggling learner I incorporated movement with just about everything I did too yes absolutely like if we were working on a spelling word or we were working on math facts um, I would have him do the jumping game and to mm -hmm. this the college student I promise you he would be like mom I love the jumping game <laughs> because he would you know every time he would spell a word right he would jump to me and he was also my mama's boy. So this helped, but like we would make the distance appropriate, you know, and once he would get however many words spelled right with each one jumping forward, he would get to mama and he would just throw himself on me and give me a big hug. And we would just kind of oh. rest. And I go, okay, go back. Another idea. We did math facts on the trampoline. We mm -hmm. also did math facts going up and down the stairs. Yep. Um, I'm sure you're probably like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to find what works for your kids. But those fun times are so important because again, it can't be all about the academics and it can't be all about it's all serious all the time because then that yes. does everything out of your relationship. And I'm betting you started homeschooling for the fun of it because it is so fun when they're younger, especially. Right. 
ah, I think of all the fun things that we did, just precious <laughs> moments. It is fun. Absolutely. So incorporate it how you need to, to do those breaks and enjoy mm -hmm. it with them. Yes. Great, great advice. And your house may get a little messy, but just, you know, just embrace it for the, the season that it is because it will, like Kristen said, you turn around and they're grown up. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. Yeah, lots of good memories of forts in our house and and other things. And I, I there are some products out there if you feel like I'm just not creative even enough to to figure out what brain breaks to do. There's some that you can buy. You can cut them up in pieces, put them in a jar, and then just have your child pull them out, and then that's what you do. So wherever you're at, just know that um, there's somebody else creative out there if you're not creative, and you can find things. But, yeah, just you look under brain breaks, um, and that's great. So – Kristen, our hour, hour is almost up, and I would love um, for our audience to know um, what services you offer, where they can find you um, as we're, we're kind of wrapping up. Absolutely. So the best place to find me is um, my website is frugalhealthyhome.com. Um, I blog on there, but there's also ways you can get in touch with me on there, like on the, the front page. Um, so what I mostly do, my passion is working with Christian moms that find themselves in overwhelm or in chaos or just feeling like they can't quite bring order. And my specialty is helping moms to bring that order to their day. Um, and teaching those self-care things and teaching the things that help take care of you. Because if you don't learn that, and that does include nutrition, like I teach body, mind, and soul because we're all of those. So um, I definitely have a nutrition component because so many moms experience anxiety or depression and it can be food related. It Absolutely. can what you're putting in your body, if you're not putting in real foods, you could have a food sensitivity. You can, there's so many different things. And because um, I am an RN and I'm a health coach, I do specialize in working with moms to help them get those things figured out. Um, but otherwise, like I love helping. I have all kinds of tools in my toolbox with helping moms to bring order to their day in a good way, not causing stress. Because again, we know what we just said, like you can take it a little too far, which I have experience doing as well. Um, so, but that is really what I do in working with moms. Um, I have a 12 week program. So my coaching program, oh, awesome. revive and thrive for moms, coaching for moms. Um, and my program is called divine renewal. So oh. That is my program that I offer and it just helps moms to kind of get back on the, get back on the right track and find that joy and peace in their home. Absolutely. That's what we want. And sometimes it just seems like it's so far away. So I'm so glad that you offer that service. Um, and especially for uh, moms who really feel like I, I can't navigate this road myself. I need somebody there with me. So, um, yeah. So thank you. Yeah accountable and holding someone's hand and, you know, guiding them through the things that may be on their own. They just aren't going to hold themselves accountable, you know? Right. Yes. So if you, you missed that up on the, the link on the um, screen, um, frugalhealthyhome.com, I will have that link embedded in the description, both on, on YouTube as well as on the podcast. So you can just click on that and it'll be a lot easier to, to find. So, um, so thank you, Kristen, so much for your time, for your wisdom and your encouragement today that um, it's, it's a big dose of what we need as we start this new school year. <laughs> Awesome. I loved it. I totally enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. I'm glad we were able to connect. Um, so next week, we're going to be actually on Wednesday evening versus our Tuesday afternoon. Um, my guest is Dawn Spence. She is the teaching manager here at Sped Homeschool. She's run our blogs for, well, since we started Sped Homeschool, like, seven years ago. <laughs> and so she's been with me for a long time, a dear friend of mine. And um, she is a retired special education teacher and um, has homeschooled for many, many years with um, kids who have um, some, some really um, profound learning issues. And so she's just going to um, talk with us about um, helping set your struggling learner up for learning success and what, what that can look like. She's so creative. Um, she can take regular curriculum, change it up, which I can't, um, but um, you'll love to hear all the advice that um, that she has to share. So, um, so you'll want to join us for that. But thank you again, Kristen. I really appreciate your time and um, just uh, taking time out of your schedule to join us. And um, and may God bless you in your um, your 
your ministry as um, you continue to help parents. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, until then, everybody, take care. God bless. And I will see you same, well, different time next week, um, but same place. And um, and we'll have another conversation that hopefully will empower you um, on your homeschool journey. Bye, everyone. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on this podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. This has been Empowering Homeschool Conversations with Peggy Ployer. Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Randy. And we're from Salty Saints Podcast. We're a theology and apologetics podcast. To find out more, subscribe at lifeaudio.com.